Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 37 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. We were doing chromatography and I told you that chromatography is of two kinds. The first is adsorption chromatography and the second is partition chromatography. We have done adsorption chromatography which is further of two types. One is thin layer chromatography and the second is column chromatography. We have done these in the previous uh, couple of videos. So if you do not understand what I am saying, I would encourage you to watch those videos and then come to the last category that is partition chromatography. I introduced the, when I told you the difference between uh, adsorption chromatography and partition chromatography, I told you that adsorption chromatography was based on the difference in the adsorption, the capacity to adsorb of the different components. In the case of partition chromatography also, we use the same concept. It is based on adsorption, but the only difference is that the adsorption continues till the components are separated. So based on the continuous differential partitioning of components of a mixture between the stationary and the mobile phases. When you carry out chromatography, there is one, there is a mixture, the compound whose components have to be separated is known as the compound. Then there is a stationary phase, a phase that allows the components to move on them. So that phase is stationary and the mixture is supposed to be the mobile phase, but the mixture cannot move on its own. Therefore, it needs a carrier and that carrier is a solvent. So a solvent takes the mixture and it moves along the on the uh, stationary phase. So the solvent and the uh, mixture, they become the mobile phase while the stationary phase is that phase in, on which the substance is moving. And that stationary phase could be, it could be a column of silica gel, it could be alumina as we did in thin layer chromatography. But in paper chromatography, the stationary phase is a paper on in which water molecules have been dropped, uh, trapped. It is these water molecules which act as the stationary phase. And this paper is a special paper which is known as the chromatography paper, which is specially used for this purpose because it traps those water molecules in it. And then a solvent is chosen. So what is done in thin layer chromatography is a chromatography paper is taken like I have been doing in the previous few videos. I'm using a paper towel and I've cut the paper towel into small strips in order to explain chromatography. So on the paper towel, a mixture of some compounds is applied, which are usually colored. Chroma means color. So I took blue ink and I put it here. I do not have an ink of another color, although I did carry out this process with a, uh, with a highlighter of yellow color and I'll show you the results. But since this is not a chromatography paper, you will not get the same results, but you will get an idea what chromatography is like. So in the case of paper chromatography, now an example of partition chromatography is paper chromatography. It's a type of partition chromatography. So in this, a continuous differential extraction, continuously the dot will keep moving until the different colored compounds, they stop at different levels and they separate out. In this, a special chromatography paper is used, which contains water trapped in it, which acts as a stationary phase. The water which is trapped in it acts as a stationary phase phase. A strip of chromatography paper is marked with the mixture and it is marked with the mixture and a line is drawn here. That line is known as the baseline. If you look here in the diagram, you have this paper and it has a pink dot, the spot of the mixture and there's a line which is known as the baseline. You do draw it with the help of a pencil when you do it in the laboratory. Why pencil? Because pencil the lead of pencil is graphite and graphite is non-adsorbent. It will not start moving with the solvent. You do not want to make a line with ink and that ink itself will start moving and interfering with your, um, with your experiment. So you will use a pencil which has a graphite lead and you'll draw a line. That line is known as baseline. Why we draw the baseline? When you dip this in the solvent, you do not go beyond the baseline. You just dip it till the baseline. So that gives you a base mark from which you have to measure the distance. In the in thin layer chromatography, I explained how we calculate the RF factor, the retention factor. So I would encourage you to watch that video to see how you calculate the RF factor. So you take the baseline and then you dip it to the baseline and the solution starts moving. 
So a strip of chromatography paper marked with the mixture is dipped in a suitable solvent. The solvent is the mobile phase. The solvent is the mobile phase. It moves. And the solvent, as the solvent rises up, the paper, yes, the solvent, how does it rise in the paper? By capillary action. If you really see, the paper is made in such a fashion that it is a weave, you know, and in that weave, the each weave, the holes in each weave, they act as capillaries. So the water or the solvent starts rising due to capillary action in the on the chromatography paper. So it rises on the paper by capillary action and it flows over the spot. As it crosses the spot, the spot consists of a compound that is soluble in the solvent. I have chosen water because this ink is soluble in water. So you'll choose a solvent which dissolves the mixture and then the mixture starts moving along with the solvent. So it flows over the spot. The different components, they separate according to their differing partition in the two phases. For example, when I used the yellow marker and blue ink and I dipped it in the solution, I got, I wonder if you can notice the yellow color and the blue color are separated. But since this was not a chromatography paper, it was just a paper roll, a paper towel, the difference is not very clear. But they would have traveled to different distances and then you would have marked that the blue mark is still here and the yellow mark has gone up to here. So you will calculate and if this is the baseline, you will calculate the distance, the RF values from the baseline. And if the solvent came up to here, you can calculate the uh, RF values for the different components, which got absorbed more and which got absorbed less. So the components will separate out into their, and, uh, into their differing partition in the two phases. So in the two phases, that is in the liquid phase and the stationary phase, the solvent will uh, will carry the components and the different components will be carried to different distances and therefore a partitioning will be created. The paper strip is known, this paper strip which is formed as a result of the chromatography is known as the chromatogram. So let us take a look at this, how it happens. So we take the strip, the paper strip marked with a mixture, the spots of the separated colored components are visible at different heights as i showed you in the case of yellow and blue that they are they you can see the different colors at different heights so what i do i take the blue ink and i'm going to imagine that there's a line here an imaginary line with the help of a pencil and i'm going to that would be your baseline till where you put it in the water now it starts rising and you see the ink has started moving the ink is moving along with the solvent and I try to keep the baseline static. You're supposed to keep a hold it with a holder and not with your hand because my hand moves. It is supposed to be a very stable apparatus. And that's why you put it in a cylinder, in a jar. Do you see there? Now we see due to the motion of my hand, you know, the ink is going here and there. So as it rises up, it should rise in a straight line as the solvent keeps going up. And if my hand was stable, it would actually have gone straight up. We find that at a certain spot, the blue ink is going to stop moving and only the solvent will be moving ahead beyond that. So the blue ink could, would get absorbed, adsorbed only till that level. It is that much adsorbent beyond which anything which is less adsorbent would travel a longer distance. And anything which is more adsorbent would travel a shorter distance because it will get adsorbed on the chromatography paper and it will stop there itself. And I notice here now that my ink has stopped moving and it is only the solvent, that is the water, that's moving up now. Beyond this point, I do not see the ink moving. And honestly, if you take a good look at this, you would be able to see a little difference in the colors. The ink that I used was not actually a pure uh, dark navy blue. It has got a tone of royal blue in it and it has got a turquoise in it also. And the turquoise and the navy blue have kind of separated. Now, the solvent has already traveled up to here. Do you see? It's wet till here. And if you can notice the turquoise color, oh, what a surprise. Uh, the turquoise and the blue have separated out. So maybe this ink was a mixture of two colors, that is turquoise and blue. The blue stopped first and the turquoise moved on. So what does this tell us? that the blue color is more adsorbent than navy blue, so it stopped short. 
while the royal blue or the, the turquoise was not as absorbent, therefore it traveled a longer distance. So if you if this was the baseline, the distance of the solvent, the distance covered by blue line, uh, the blue ink, let us say it stopped here, upon the distance from the baseline would give you the RF value for the blue ink and the distance traveled by the royal blue ink or the turquoise ink divided by the total distance traveled by the solvent from the baseline would give you the RF value of the turquoise ink. That is how you see that the different colors, the different colored compounds have been separated. If you look at this one, here you also see a very clear demarcation of navy blue and the turquoise. They are separated. Now, if you have the spots which are colored of colored compounds, they will be visible at different heights from the position of the initial spot in the chromatograph. You see, the initial spot was here and you can see the blue ink is still here and the turquoise has gone up till here. So the different colors, you can clearly see the color, the um, compound moving from its initial spot. And if the compounds are colored, you will be able to tell the different colors. But sometimes you use chromatography even for compounds which are not colored, but they may acquire a color in the presence of either they are fluorescent. So if you put ultraviolet light over the chromatogram, it'll start, it'll be illuminated and you'll be able to see it. Or in some cases, you could use another compound as a spray and spray the chromatogram with it. And that compound which reacts with this compound which has been spray, sprayed to give a colored compound will react with it and give a colored compound and that is how you will be able to identify it. So the spots of separated colorless compounds can be seen either under UV light if it is fluorescent in nature or it can be used by the use, uh, it can be seen by the use of an appropriate spray agent as we do it in thin layer chromatography. So I explained this process in thin layer chromatography too, that this compound itself is not colored on the chromatogram, but it reacts with another compound. And I take that compound in a spray bottle and I spray it, give a fine spray over the chromatogram. So that gets adsorbed and that compound which was adsorbed will react with that com this compound, the sprayed compound, and it'll turn into a color and you'll be able to see it. So these, this was chromatography. And with this, I come to the end of the subtopic methods of purification of organic compounds. After this, in the next video, we are going to start the qualitative analysis of organic compounds. So with this, I wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.